Okay, great. Can you have your attention then, please? All looking, listening this way. Okay, welcome to Crowden in the Peak District National Park. My name's Matt, this is Naomi, and we got Claire here today who's helping us. She's doing a podcast. She's going to record bits of us doing our things and have a chat with us. Um, why have you come here today? Yes. To learn, to learn about rivers. Fantastic. Let's frame that in a more exciting way. You've come here to have a learning adventure. So, plan for today. We're going to walk about 10 minutes from here and then we're going to get to a place where you can get in the river. Anybody got any questions? No. Yes, go on. There are creatures, yeah. This big with big teeth. <laughs> Not really, no, no. There's no crocodiles. Anyone got any ideas what kind of creatures there might be here? Yes. Fish, maybe. Some of the deeper rivers have fish. Hello, welcome back. The voice that you're hearing there is a familiar voice who was on episode two of our Londondale Tales podcast. That's the voice of Matt Ross, who is one of the lead rangers here at the Londondale Environmental Centre. And today we are at Crowden Car Park. We've come out with a group of year six school children. We've come all the way over from Ashton and um, we are going river dipping. So whilst uh, Matt continues in the background doing the introductions, uh, we will roll up the theme music. And next time you hear us, we may be nearer Crowden Brook. On we go. Great, so we're going to start off on our walk, um, it takes about 10 minutes, you will get away from all this stuff and then you'll start to see what the National Park is all about. Okay, so make sure you've got your bags and everything. And... Well, we've come further down the valley, as Matt pointed out to the children, that we are at a point where Crowden Little Brook meets Crowden Great Brook and becomes what? Crowden Mega Brook? Crowden Brook. <laughs> Just Crowden Brook. <laughs> nice and simple, short and sweet. <laughs> Why do you choose this place, um, you know, as a location to bring school children? And what are you up to here today, Matt? Well, it's a fantastic natural classroom here because you've got this amphitheatre of the hills. There's a sort of floodplain, very flat bit in the middle where the group now, it's really nice. They've got plenty of space to get around. We can see where they're all up to. There's room for them to go a bit free range within a safe limit. Um, It's a fantastic place to get in the river as well because it's nice and shallow here. Uh, And also one of the best things about this place is they can come back here. You know, obviously they need a car to get here, but there is a free car park and it's a short walk up. And we always say that, you know, this place is here. It's not just for a school trip. It's here to come back with your families, come and enjoy. I mean, when I was a kid, this was my absolutely favourite place in the world to come and play. And it's really nice to hopefully pass that on and give that opportunity to other people. Um, And the subject of what we're doing today, we do a range of different trips some of them are very curriculum based a time with what the school are are doing in their topics others of them are more about nature connection and getting um, groups of children and young people from quite deprived areas out just to experience the countryside this one's a bit of a mix and match really Um, it's it's about rivers is the primary focus it's about getting these kids to get in a river see what it actually feels like you can't learn about a river just by looking at photos and videos in a classroom you've got to feel the rush of the water the cold um, see it bubbling over the rock, see what it actually looks like. So that's what today is all about and hopefully connect them to nature and get them to see a bit of the bigger picture as well. So the, the school today comes from Ashton mm-hmm. and they are year six of which school? A parochial school. Okay, so we've been, um, as we kind of walked over here, they were they seemed excited. Some of them seemed quite nervous when you mentioned the word creatures. <laughs> I saw one girl absolutely look horrified at the thought of seeing spiders, insects and birds. You know, do, do you think many of them will have been to a place like the Peak District National Park? Often not, no. Um, and, and I had some really interesting chats just informally with the kids as we were walking up and some, one of them said, I've seen a canal but I've never seen a river. And another one said, I've never been to a place like this. The mountains are huge. You know, so you quite often get these comments. I mean, we get a lot of schools from inner city Manchester who've never seen a sheep, never seen, you know, sometimes really any extent of green space beyond the little square um, surrounded by office buildings or houses so um, it it really is eye-opening for them and you know hopefully some of those 
attitudes of occasion is a bit fear towards it because it's the unknown and we hope that kind of by gently sort of scaffolding that for them and you know giving them a chance to do it under in a safe place like this under lead conditions with people that know the area we hope that can you know start to take some of those barriers away and make them want to actually see more and come back on their own i think what you know as adults we often put like blocks and barriers in our mind don't we as an adult i kind of look at this river and think you want me to walk across that river <laughs> i'm like oh it's got a bit of green mold i might slip i might get wet it's very cold isn't it but you know watching the children as they kind of see in awe the river and that excitement and just and being in the moment and just splashing inside of it is is such a wonderful thing that it's so easy to forget mm. how simple that is yeah, that's why I do this job. You know, it's the first time we've done this rivers trip this year because it's too cold in January and February. And Naomi and I were just saying, my colleague, um, you know, how great it is to be back and see, see that wonder. It's like you turn a light bulb on, you know, and you see that, that light come in the eyes and go, this is the place we can do this. And, and it's great. We always start this day by getting them just to get in the river gently and just have a little play around in it before we get them to do any you know any of the more instruction based task based learning attached to that because they need to just have that chance to explore it and get to know it and concentrate on their balance and all those things and experience that before then we're asking them to do any of the other more focused stuff yeah well i did record um the sound of the the brook where we are and also the moment that some of them started kind of exploring and splashing and getting their way through so um, we'll just pause our conversation and uh, rewind the clock a few minutes and you can listen to just how excited these children really were playing here. Well, it's not all just like playing and splashing about, is it, Matt? I mean, you, you come here to also help aid the teachers in their education and the curriculum. And I was really fascinated when you started throwing some absolute awesome stats at me and facts about all the different types of wildlife and habitat that live in a brook like this. Um, what was the one that you said to me? Like a nymph fly or something like that? Yeah, so uh, nymphs are flies that haven't yet grown their wings, basically. So a lot, of, a lot of insects start their life crawling under a rock in a river and then later on will grow their wings and come out and fly away. So dragonflies are the kind of obvious one that people think of, damselflies. Here are upland streams, a really specialist environment that um, contain some creatures that aren't necessarily ones you'd think of or... or or notice but they're really special highly adapted really awesome little creatures um, one of the main ones is a stonefly and a stonefly there's about 3,000 species of them worldwide of which we get 34 in this country and this is their their unique ecological niche this river it's fast flowing streams with lots of rocks and the reason they like fast flowing upland streams is they're very clean the way the water keeps tumbling over keeps the oxygen in it it's not slow moving and stagnant there's no pollution here you know it's it's a very clean area particularly since all the clean air act and and there's less acid rain hopefully and there's improvements being made in that way this water is nice and clean which is why it goes to be manchester's drinking water um and that they're this is their absolute perfect sweet spot this river and they've got some amazing adaptations um they they can you know they've got claws on their hands that will on their feet that will let them um cling to the undersides of the rocks i mean you know they're, they're up to three centimeters big sometimes the, the little baby ones i think i've seen one ah i i think i've seen one and it's just on the um the other side of this um bridge because me oh, and great. a few of the kids are saying what's that ah, is long it and thin s- yes with like kind of yeah. two kind of crazy claw things ah, coming yeah. out of its butt yeah the little tails they're called circes Wow. Um, like, is it a spider but it's brilliant. only got six there you legs go. welcome to the magical world of the oh. stonefly yeah um they're great you know they're not an insect anyone names but they've got all these adaptations they cling to a rock they'll spend up to three years at the bottom of a river and then they'll grow their wings and fly around for maybe two or three weeks 
So, you know, 90% of their life is, is clinging on under these rocks, eating algae, vegetation. Some of them are carnivorous as well. Um, they will, there's one called a yellow sally, um, that's carnivorous they're, they're a sort of really olivey yellow colour and then you know they have this tiny little window of life outside in this seeing the view that we're seeing and yeah. all this area and most of their life is in that river it's, it's where they grow up it's, it's like a nursery for them really and um, yeah they're just amazing little creatures um, yeah wow go on yellow Sally yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Sally can wait yeah okay. wait for three years <laughs> <laughs> oh that's too cheesy isn't it <laughs> So what else are they learning? Then Naomi's kind of leading the class. She's holding up pictures and words, and they're all very attentive. I've got to say, they're they very are. well School behaved. Great. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else will they be learning here today? So really, what we're trying to do is bring the river to life for them. And we just oh, I just saw a frog hop in. There you go. More more wildlife already. Just on the edge there. <laughs> I'm easily distracted by moving creatures. Um, so yeah, so that you know um, the, the important thing of this day is as well. We do always do like that. If we see a creature, we stop. You know, like once we had deer coming through, and you know that is the learning right there. Look at these amazing animals. It, it's got to embrace that part of that day. We don't just come and do a worksheet and heads down. Don't look at don't look at that frog. We're doing a worksheet. That is. Ugh. Um, so yeah, we, we make pauses for their bigger stuff as well. But what they're doing now is they're going to do a river measuring activity. So we've done that kind of initial splash around in the river, get to um, get to feel it, get to know it a bit. And what Naomi will have been doing now is just asking them some observations about what they noticed. Usually things like the current, they'll, they'll say things like the water was pushing me. Um, and then we go, right, okay, yeah, why do you think that is? And talk about gravity and the flow of a river and how that's different to a lake. And that's what makes the difference. And what they're going to do now is they're going to get some equipment, some scientific fieldwork equipment, and they're going to measure some different things of the river, like the stream, um, the, the flow of the stream and the current, the depth in different places, the width, different things like that. Um, and the, we measure the, the speed of flow by getting some dog biscuits and floating them down the river dog between biscuits. two points. Yeah, dog biscuits are great because they're biodegradable. We try and take them out again at the end, but if they do float away, you know, sheep eats it or a dog, it's fine. It's just flour. Um, rather than using something plastic obviously so they'll do a bit of that and then later on we're going to get river dipping looking at these creatures and we're going to take a walk up the hill and so we can get a bird's eye view of this landscape and they can identify things like a meander and the source of a stream and see them in the landscape because that's the that's the thing it's all about you know it's really really hard to teach about rivers in a classroom when you're in a box and there's no river there so we're trying to just bring that to life as much as possible today. I mean, I grew up in Coventry, in a city, and I would have, I've only in the last few years learnt what valleys are and meanders and uxbows and things like that. So, you know, well, you've got a really big fly on your collar. Yeah. Insect whisperer. Yeah. Like, what is it? It is. It is a stonefly. Are you kidding me? I am the stonefly whisperer. I mean, it's a very small one compared yeah. to... Um, it uh, is. The one. It's like long, skinny and black, I've got yeah, to say. Yeah, so these ones are called needle flies. They're from the genus Leuctra. Oh, okay. And, yeah, the longer, thin ones are, are called needle today? fly. Yeah. Um, it's very it's, shy. It's not too chatty. Yeah. And these ones, you can see it's sort of feeling its way around my hand. Um, a lot of the adults don't even feed. They just, they just, it's just <laughs> looking for a mate. And what they'll do is they, the females drum on the rocks to go, hey boys. I'm going <laughs> to take I am. a picture of there right now. There we go. You ain't finding no mate on your yeah. hand, is he, really? No, beautiful little creature, though. Let me tell you, you want to head to the bridge. Yeah. There's, there's a couple of other uh, peeps over there. That's it. Okay. I mean, it, it's where we started. We had the really the, the busy sound of the road. Mm. We walked from Crowden Car Park. We've walked, what, 15 minutes? And now the sound's getting... We've got somewhere, there's a plane above us, isn't there? But the blue mm. sky is here today. The clouds are really light and fluffy. Um, the landscape is really brown, but I guess at different times of the year when you come here, it's all different colours as well. Mm. And uh, Naomi was saying the thing that she really enjoys is that you can see the birds at this time of year um, because there's no trees in the leaves. Mm. You can hear them and they, they sound really loud and bright. Of course, when I mention them, they, they go quiet. But what other types of wildlife would you see here? Um, so it's a really good place for birds. Um, we've got the, the sort of mosaic of habitats here. We've got the open moorland and we've got the woodland. The woodland here is a Derbyshire Wildlife Trust Reserve, which has some um, summer migrants called uh, pied flycatchers, which are quite a rare bird. On the hilltops, we get the sounds of the curlews and the lapwings. We get those coming over here and the grouse, you know, all those really evocative um, sounds of the moorland birds. We get that. There's also another one, a little bird with its sort of orange and black and white called the stone chat. 
and it's called a stone chat because it sounds like two pebbles clicking together when it talks i've heard, um, heard yeah. about this yeah yeah we see those i think there have been peregrines seen here i've never seen one myself but they do yes. live off over at dovestone which is you know a couple of miles over I, the hill i have so. seen two peregrines um here when i walked up uh, towards lado rock so just over the other side ah, of this yeah, um, yeah. nature reserve yeah and kestrels as well mm, kestrels yeah we often get kestrels and you buzzards. know those because they're red yeah, yeah yeah and again we'll always stop the day so the kids can see one of these look at that up there because you know towns and cities you're going to see sparrows blue tits robins things like that you're not going to see these enormous buzzards and we've got a, a stuffed buzzard at the center that someone gave us and it's absolutely enormous when you see it you know it's like my arms outstretched its wingspan it's it's great yeah do you think enough schools know that this is something that you offer at even the Longdendale Environmental Centre, let alone as the park? I mean, yeah, it's, we, we, we try and get the word out. We're oversubscribed at the minute, which is great, but it's um, that's partly because we we've only got the capacity of what my, Naomi and myself can deliver. We'd love to get out to more schools and spread the word, particularly to, I think, some of the schools that are further away don't have a clue we're here you know right in the city it's hard to imagine and again it's a barrier isn't it well that's a big wild place how do we do a trip there um, and what we hope to do as well as as schools coming out with us is enable teachers to bring their own groups for maybe not for doing things in a river or you know the slightly more um extreme stuff but you know just bring them out for a walk get your class out even if you can't get out here go out in your own green space and then maybe step it up to come into the peak district you know we really want to share that message it's here for you it's here for everyone and particularly the young people because they're the future of it who's going to be here to protect it it's going to be these guys hopefully in, in 20 30 years i mean it's interesting isn't it because at the moment in the news there's so much stuff about access and um, about access land about right mm. to roam and actually, a predominant number of people who live in this country live in the city. They don't live in rural areas. So I guess for you, this is one of the ways that you kind of break down that barrier of saying you're welcome here too. Absolutely, yeah. And we always, at the end of every session, say, come back here. This is for you. This is for you. Bring your parents. If you can't get here, there's other places. You know, you can get a train to Edale um or to glossop or to hadfield or any of those places you know come back even if it's not here come back and explore this because it's for you and it is free and it always will be that's it's so important right so the the children are getting back in the river that's what you can hear they've got their wet socks back on their wellies are back on some of them are so confident they're just plodding on through um and others are really kind of like tentative on the side aren't they they're quite cautious and like just sussing it out they've got sticks with them and so this is where you say they're they're measuring the flow and the current that's right yeah so they're, they're with the meter sticks they're measuring the depth and they're comparing it in different places because one well, of the main takeaway points you want to give them is that a river isn't the same depth in every bit it's got deep bits it's got shallow and the current affects that you know because it's easy to just see a river as this flat blue line on a map and like i say bringing it to life it's part of making it seem 3d and a real thing and a real thing that changes and I always make a point of telling them you know I probably in the six years doing this job I've probably been here 500 times with different groups I'd say and it's different every single time it's never been exactly the same depth and and we always have to I have to get in first and check where it's going to be deep because you just don't know you've got some idea but it, it the flow of the river and the way the rocks move that the course of the river has changed over the last few years I've been here that island wasn't an island that it was joined on and then after a couple of flood events it's um it's split off and become an island and then the river sh channel is shifting over in the great brook over the other side there's a bit that's fallen in completely so you can see those processes of erosion deposition happening which is you know it's it's a changing living landscape yeah. gosh well they look like they're having a lot of fun i mean do you think the teachers um get something out of coming to these sessions as well i think they do i think they get to see the kids in a different light for one thing like you were just saying about some of them you know see moving a bit shy on the side of them's really confident it's a different side sometimes the kids that are most confident in the classroom aren't as confident outside and vice versa and you know it's not about writing today we do almost no writing they fill in a couple of little things on a tiny worksheet but that's not what we're about you know this is about doing and it enables those children that maybe you know feel a bit left behind in the classroom with the written tasks to, to shine at that and it enables them to build resilience so it's really nice through the day seeing them go from really taking these ginger tentative steps into the river at half past ten to two o'clock they're like can we go back in can we go back in and they're, they're you know plodding all around stomping through and they're completely happy in this new environment um, so it's really nice so hopefully the teachers see that as well and get to see what a learning resource we've got here and 
you know as well as the actual river based tasks we try and throw in some general outdoor learning nature connection things which they, they don't have to be here to do that they can do that in their school field in the local woodland there thing like that and you know that's really important we we run some teacher training days as well to try and gen them up and, and help spread the message because it it cut you know we, we have limited capacity it's not just us that do it. it needs to be education everywhere getting kids outside and doing that kind of thing i mean i suppose we should also point out that you know people can contact you if they are teachers listening um or even people who are in local community groups to mm-hmm. contact you that your center that is based at the old engine shed just off Wooded Pass and Timbers is that you're open for business you're open to work and collaborate with people it's a resource that you're not you know the Peak District National Park has a base at this part of you know the park you don't have to go and contact someone miles away you know this area you know what's here and what's on the doorstep Mm, absolutely yeah so get in touch with us because it, whether you're wanting to do a visit led by us or you're wanting just some advice on taking your group out independently that's that's what we're here for we want to encourage that we've got a range of off-the-shelf curricular programs but also we're increasingly looking at working with sort of mental health leads in schools doing well-being groups you know things for for children who find mainstream education hard and just need that breathing space instead of being in a box all the time um we're really trying to provide opportunities for that so yeah if you if you have any thoughts of getting involved get in touch with us you can email learning.discovery at peakdistrict.gov.uk and that puts you through to our main office and they'll uh, direct you through to us well i love your knowledge can you hit me up with like one more fact of something i'm putting you on the spot here but i feel like i just want to like export your brain into mine of all your knowledge <laughs> of everything cool to do with like the wildlife and the valleys every time i meet you i feel like i learn something new you're just like a fountain of knowledge of life it's just so cool i'm such a city kid and then when i'm with you i'm like yeah today i learned about snow players <laughs> you know what i mean i'll put that on my cv thanks um what's a good fact about here um i think another river fat there's another little creature that lives in the river it's also called a nymph and a nymph is a, a creature that sort of has the same shape as its its adult when it's a young one so like a dragonfly does a caterpillar doesn't it looks very different to a butterfly but a dragonfly is the same shape um there's another nymph called a caddisfly nymph and they're very small and soft bodies but what they do is they make themselves a home out of some of them use little bits of stone bits of mud some of them use little bits of reed and rush and they Chew, chew silk like spiders do and put it all together and you see these little things of stones stuck on a rock and then this little creature pops its head out and will grab some food floating by they're great so there's just i just i never cease to be amazed by the way animals adapt to this kind of environment so that's that's one to look out for maybe we'll spot one later a nymph house yeah wow imagine if they personalized it with a red door and <laughs> i suppose you want to camouflage yourself really so that you know that's amazing. I mean, thank you so much. And also, thank you, um, you know, for welcoming me as part of this project into your centre and connecting me with various different people and just being an oracle, really. It's been really <laughs> great. Um, if people want to go and find out more, um, we put a pin in where the centre is. Uh, we'll put some photos of um, some of the snaps I've got of the river, not of the children, obviously, but some of the things we've been doing and playing, lots of wellies and things like that. And I may see if that um, little little fella that I saw on the side of the bridge is still there, although I imagine he's probably done one by now, hasn't he? <laughs> Two or three weeks live. You might want a bit of peace and quiet. Yeah, well, he might, your children. he might be sunbathing. You know, it's the first warm day we've had. Should we just try? Yeah. We just, okay, right. It's the end of the podcast. Will we see the same thing? We're walking over a bridge. It's going to get a bit windy. It was right here where these people were sat. Is it there? Yes, it's still there. Oh, wow. That is a really big stone fly nymph. Yeah. In fact, I think it is just waiting to hatch out of its final nymph stage to grow its wings. So it's gone to a dry place. Some of them change skins 33 times. Are you kidding? No, 33 times. So that might be the 33rd and final. That's why I think it's a nymph that hasn't grown its wings yet and it's going to hatch out today. Good spot. Good spot. No Good spot. Right, well, there we go. We have finished this episode with a nymph. A nymph? Nymph. Yes. 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 Perfect okay. way to finish. <laughs> I'll never do a podcast like this again, will I? Uh, do visit longdondaletales.co.uk and uh, we'll enjoy the sunshine and uh, the sounds of the kids having a good time. Take care.